Welcome to the realm of magic and mystery, classic horror and sci-fi. You are now entering the House of the Unusual podcast with your hosts, Eddie and Joe. Welcome to another exciting podcast of House of the Unusual. Today we have a special guest star. His name is Thanos. Now this man is one of the world's geniuses that works with AI and data. And he is, I mean, he's very complicated, a little more complicated than I want, but you could call him a modern day Einstein. Hi Thanos, how are you? Hi Eddie, thanks for having me in the, in the podcast. Thanos, I want you to give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to let you take over the show Give me a, a total breakdown of how you think AI is going to transform the world and transform uh, people like us who collect monsters uh, with robots. And you know I'm a big robot buff, so take it, buddy. Thanks, Eddie. So AI is a little bit of a controversial topic. So on one hand, we have the excitement uh, from the community of, of, of science, of engineering. Um, we see a lot of advances, a lot of development on AI and also the applications. Um, for example, with ChatGPT, there is a big hype now. People are excited that they can easily summarize uh, papers um, or long, long documents. They can produce uh, new, new documents. Also, they can generate Im- images. On the other hand, we have the people that they are, they are afraid of, of this new development of AI, and they are thinking that AI they will change our, our lives radically. They are afraid of losing their jobs. They are afraid that uh, well, uh, the, the robots uh, will take over. Uh, a little bit from Terminator. Um, so we see uh, both sides of the same coin. Uh, my input is that uh, for centuries, machines have not only assisted but also progressively replaced human labor. So uh, we can say that we're at the fourth uh, industrial revolution. So the previous three revolutions, the machines uh, replaced the human labor and we, we moved to the next level. Uh, in contrast though, this, uh, how now this fourth industrial revolution is different from the previous ones is that um, in the previous industrial revolutions, uh, the mechanization was um, heavily relied on human input. So the machines weren't exactly autonomous. They could do a lot of things without any inter- human intervention, but they, they, we had uh, they had someone like a human to oversee and supervise the machines. Now the fourth industrial revolution is a little bit different because we start seeing autonomy in AI without any human intervention. Intervention. So definitely the AI revolution is infused by the, the huge amount of data that we have and is reshaping the world, automating the human intelligence and labor and representing um, a steering, steering vision for the future. However, I have to say that this, uh, this vision is inherently restrictive because AI is not about automation only. Um, the thing with AI is not about automating the human intelligence and the human labor, but the, th- the point is how we can augment human labor. Just to give you an example, uh, a lot of things that we do today, there are a lot of uh, repetitive things. You, constantly, every day, people they are coming and, uh, and they're asking to, for their parcels to pick up. This is quite a repetitive process and I would say pretty uh, monotonous. So we could easily with AI replace uh, this monotonous process with, with a machine. For example, the tenants would come to, to the reception, to the concierge. They will ask for, uh, they will say their uh, apartment number and the machine will know if they have a new parcel or not. In case, if they don't have a parcel, they will say to them, sorry, you don't have a new parcel. 
But if they do, the machine can easily go and pick up the parcel and deliver it to them. So with that, we, um, we automate a repetitive task, uh, a monotonous task for humans. And now, um, the, the person that, that works at the concierge can deal with more meaningful tasks. For example, maybe can, um, um, can pay attention at the security of the building, in case, in case of an unfortunate incident that uh, one of the residents needs um, an ambulance to, to be called, uh, the person at the concierge can call an ambulance. So the human that was doing the repetitive task that now it's replaced by the machine can focus on, on more meaningful tasks, tasks of higher value. So this is called the, use, the universe of augmentation. So. Um, generally speaking, we're not talking about replacing the labor. Of course, some, some jobs will be replaced by the machines, by automation. But what we really talk about uh, in AI revolution is about the universe of augmentation. How AI, how technology can augment the human skills. So humans, they move away from the repetitive, monotonous, uh, tasks that they don't give them anything, no new knowledge, no new skills, and focus on the higher value tasks. So, now, when it comes to, to your area about the uh, treasure hunts or mystery hunts, so AI is not working with uh, like the traditional programming, is not based on rules, but is based on data. So the AI algorithms, they're, ba they're trained or on vast amount of data on historical data for things that happened in the past so one example one application of ai i could see in your domain is to collect information from the internet around a specific topic let's say vlad dracula we can um, look at the historical sources we can summarize big amounts of documents like a lot of documents into a summary and we can extract the key phrases, for instance, key points that will help us things that we're looking for. Also, um, we can use what is called the geo uh, geospatial data because the model is trained on historical data, not only documents, but also uh, geographical locations, coordinates. We can ask the model to provide locations of historical figures or treasure hunts of a specific location we're looking for and that can help us like our adventure into our exploration. So there, there are plenty of applications. Uh, I think the, um, the limits of AI stop where the imagination of the human being stops. A couple of applications I can think of, but if you have a specific question, uh, feel free to ask me and, and I can elaborate. Thanos, after listening to you, I am amazed at the way you're so elaborate, so you're complete in this. I'm not. I mean, you've gone to areas of my, beyond my knowledge. But Thanos, I, I want to ask you this question. In the past, back in the early 1980s, we had augmented reality. Actually, we had virtual reality, and it was offered to a lot of, I think it was PlayStation, not PlayStation, but it was Atari who started playing with it. And then maybe the Sega Master System had it. And you would go to a mall and you would pay, I think, $7.50 for five minutes of virtual reality. And, and you kind of bought all this into how AI is changing the face of the world and stuff. Now, in I know virtual reality was stopped because what happened was that it would give people major headaches. And it kind of gave a splitting headache right down between your nose, your two eyes, and it was different from anything you ever done. Uh, so virtual reality took a backdrop, and then again, they're trying to promote it now in today's market. Now, I deal with robots. I love robots, but my robots are the 1950s equivalent boxy robots. They walk around, they grind, they want to conquer the world. That's my world, Thanos. In your opinion, do you think that AI eventually would make it into the let's say the gaming industry today 
Do you think that AI is going to change the way we play video games? So thanks, Eddie. It's, it's interesting you're talking about uh, uh, the virtual reality and the brain. So the reason we have headaches is because um, the, the brain understands we're moving, but we're actually static. That's why we get headaches. And I mentioned about the brain because behind AI, we have a technology uh, which is called neural networks. Neural networks is nothing more than the biological neural networks that exist in our brain. So technology nowadays has taken biological concepts and technologies and moved it into the world of AI. So uh, in terms of the gaming, uh, Microsoft recently purchased the biggest uh, deal in industry so far, 70 billions. Um, um, I'm missing the name, it's Activis Activation something. Activision? Yes. Activision. Yeah. Activision. So that was the biggest deal in, in history with 70 billions because Microsoft wants to invest somewhere that's a little bit more advanced, advanced than the other industries and that's the gaming industry because not only for artificial intelligence but the, I don't want to go into other topics but we're talking about what is called the, the metaverse so this is the virtual world that we're heading to it's like a, imagine a world where instead of chatting on Facebook we'll, be, we'll have avatars and we'll live in a virtual world that is, that's pretty, yes, I do understand what you're saying. Now, my question is, though, what do you think if, let's say, AI, we take Japan, for instance. Japan is actually making dolls. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say if they're sexual dolls or what they are, but I know that I read about in Wired Magazine, I think there was an article that explained that because of the lack of emotional attachment to a lot of the Japanese culture, that they lack, I guess, too much work or whatever. There, there's there's a big drop in birth rates in Japan and all this stuff. Well, what do you think about them inputting into, say, sex dolls, something that crazy AI, where now the thing is talking to you, it's telling, it's loving you. I mean, what do you think it's going to do to mankind? Do you think this could be the end of the world? What's your opinion, Thanos? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Eddie. So. Yeah, talking about the dolls, uh, just crossed my mind the movie I watched recently. It's called Hair with Joaquin Phoenix, where Joaquin Phoenix is having a virtual assistant and is falling in love with her uh, because he started to develop uh, um, emotions. So technology is one thing and how we use technology is based on humans. So. I'm, I'm sure there will be some edge cases where machines will take over or replace humans. One is maybe the in the sex industry or maybe in the hospitality industry as well. I see some applications where people that are older and they live in uh, uh, hospitality houses, they will be replaced. Uh, I mean, the nurses will be replaced by machines. So they will build these emotions uh, with the humans they look after and they will build this relationship which I think is not necessarily a bad thing. Of course well, there, will, there will be a malicious, malicious use of technology but this is not because of technology it's because of the human being. Okay, one thing I'm going to say to everybody listening out there which I know it's a big audience House of the Unusual does not sell any type of doll so if that's what you want you're going to have to get it on eBay. Sorry guys. That was, it's been a beautiful opportunity to have you on board. Thank you very much. And guys, uh, Chuck, take it over, buddy. Okay, Eddie, we have an amazing episode tonight, Sherry. Yeah, hi, everybody. <laughs> it's on in artificial intelligence. Uh, love it or hate it, fear it or embrace it this is a technology and it's here mm -hmm. so we have some interesting facts about this some are scary some are benign and some are crazy <laughs> <laughs> so you folks decide out there okay all right a mckinsey survey from 2021 found that 56 percent of companies have adopted ai oh. of at least one function within the organization isn't that interesting yes. wow ai is said to speed up risk analysis 
provide insights, predict supply chain, dynamics, and so on. I guess that's relating to companies. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. According to International Data Corporation, the spending on AI will reach $22 billion this year and $50 billion by 2025. Wow. Hmm. Since uh, the year 2000, the annual investment from venture capital firms into U.S. startup utilizing AI systems um, has increased as much as six times. 23 years ago. Huh? So it's on the increase. Yeah, wow. And it's going up every every year. Let's see. Alphabet's Google and NVIDIA <laughs> are two of the world's top most innovative AI companies. And ethics in the world of AI remains a hot topic, not only between active members in the field, but also in the global community at large. Absolutely. The development of machine learning is expected to be increasingly automated. Now, we know this. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, out in uh, Detroit, you know, cars have been assembling themselves for years. I mean, so that's the biggest fear. I think people are afraid they're going to lose their jobs, which, you know, I think it's a found, it's a, it, it's a valid uh, fear. The Chinese government uses financial incentives to encourage private companies to work on AI development. Wow. All right, here's one. Back in 2020, uh, only 9% of firms reported using AI tools like machine learning and voice recognition. Hmm. So huh, it, it is on the increase though, you can see that. Right. In 2020, Elon Musk predicted that AI will overtake humans and grow more intelligent than our species by 2025. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. What are you thinking? Well, we're not that far away. <laughs> I mean, what, two more years, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, well, it's pretty scary stuff. AI enabled voice assistants will not be female by default anymore. I did I did not know that. It was actually kind of cool. Is when it yeah. when it went back to default, it was always a female voice. Okay. Huh. Now last year, Chinese scientists created Alpha Dog. It's a robot dog that beyond serving as a pet could help with delivery, busing in restaurants, aiding the visually impaired. Alpha Dog uses 5G and operates autonomously. Hmm. That's pretty amazing. Maybe we should get one of those pets. I don't think we have to feed it, right? <laughs> no. Most people out there know that Cherry is a retired registered nurse. And I think at one of your hospitals you worked at, we won't yes. know which one, there was a robot that would. Well, it was an automatic, it was programmed to go pick up uh, trays or deliver uh, food trays to patients. But unfortunately, if for some reason somebody would open the door slightly, it would stop. I mean, it would talk. It would say, waiting for elevator, waiting for elevator. It was so creepy. But the poor thing was stuck one day. Somebody played a, b- a prank on it, opened the door. It was just sitting there. <laughs> so I closed the door when I walked by, and then it, re- it started to go. It was it, so strange. And uh, what happened to the robot? Oh, yeah, later on, I did not see that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's They like, still used one, though, up in the um, pharmacy in, area. In the pharmacy, yeah. They used it, yeah. I think that technology, when it goes floor to floor catching the elevators, that has to be perfected a little bit more. I think so. And there was a lot, a lot of issues. Uh-huh. Here goes one. This, this really freaked me out. Top scientists like Stephen Hawking, Bill Gates, believe AI is a perilous threat to humanity. Huh. Now, when I was a kid in the late 60s, early 70s, there was a movie out there, and I mentioned it on podcast previously. Oh, yeah. One of my favorites. It's called Westworld, 1973 by Michael Crichton. And this flipped me out, and it still flips me out, and I enjoy watching this about once a year still yet. Basically, if you folks do not know this out there, this is, it was like a, it, it was like an amusement park where, uh, where people would pay to, to visit there like a futuristic uh, a futuristic mm-hmm. yes and uh it, it was just basically it was, it was androids or robots and you'd pay a thousand dollars a day there was three worlds there was uh west world roman world and medieval world 
and this took place in in uh, Westworld, and James Borland was was the lead in there, and uh, Richard uh, Benjamin, and of course Yul Brenner played the gunslinger. I know he was cool. Yeah, he was. Like <laughs> he was pretty cool. But anyway, what happened was the the robots caught a virus. They actually talked about it. I mean, it was just unbelievable, and and they went berserk and they started to kill the people. Yeah, they so, went haywire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Michael Crichton's theme. I mean, he has written other things, and it's and it's uh, it was always that same theme. But that that is a scary concept. And one quick note: there was a sequel to Westworld in 1976, which was not as good. It was called right. Future World. Isn't that true? Sometimes when they do a second movie, no, they're it's never not as good as the first. All right. Now Google claimed to have developed AI that can design chips for computers much faster than humans. The AI need less than six hours to design the chips, while it takes human counterparts months to do the same thing. Wow, now that's amazing. This is why people are worried about AI, that they're going to take over our human jobs. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, that's, yeah. And that, that. that can happen, there's no doubt. Productivity can be increased by 40% through artificial intelligence. Mm. The world top universities have increased their AI related education over the last few years. Yeah, Wonder absolutely. what that all entails. Who knows? Who, who knows? The number of AI startups have increased 14 times since 2000. In Stanford, the number of AI related courses oh. have jumped from 25 in 2010 to 77 in 2020. Mm. That's amazing. Uh, China is the largest market for industrial robots since 2013. Uh, the sector slowed. slowed a bit due to the pandemic, of course. I think that slowed a lot of places down. Plus, uh, yeah, it's unfortunately, up. people had to close their shops too. Yeah, everything took place at home uh, for almost a year, I guess. Uh, here's something pretty cool. The top five countries or regions for AI engineers are the United States, UK and Germany, China, Canada, and India. Oh. Some some brilliant people in all those countries. They sure are. Yeah. In 2019, IBM AI machine called Debater <laughs> lost to a top ranked human debater. That's, yeah, that's amazing. I mean, uh, and this this kind of spark something within the magic community I was thinking yeah I'm a I'm a magic collector as well as like a uh, historian as well as performer now if you folks want to read something pretty interesting in 1770 uh, von Kemplin developed the Turk which which was an automated chess player oh. yeah I mean he was really cool nobody knew how he worked I mean it was a it was a life-size Turk that was sitting on top of a a uh, bureau more or less from his waist up you can only see him and they would open the bottom uh doors one by one and all that would be in there would be some machinery gears turning and so forth and they'd close it up and he would actually play chess uh people such as ben franklin played him uh napoleon and i believe they lost so nobody really knows how this thing worked but i believe it was more of a magic trick speculation there was there was a person inside that box that would go from one side to the other as they open one side at a time. And, and oh. yeah, the individual was a master chess player and, and he would pull the proper chords that would operate oh. the, yeah, yeah, his fingers to, <laughs> yeah. you know, to pick up each chess piece and so forth. He did lose, but it wasn't too often. Interesting though, check it out. Von Kemplin's chess, uh, chess player, The Turk. The Turk. Okay, in 2019, Microsoft and Google warned that bad AI could harm a business and exacerbate existing problems or create new ones. Hmm. Well, sure, that would stand to reason. I mean, yeah. I mean, for everything that fixes something, there's always a new problem that would come up, I guess. I guess. Low code or no code AI is a big current trend. Hmm. People could customize AI with only written or voice instructions that do not require complex technical knowledge. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And then according to According to uh, artificial intelligence experts, in a few generations, we won't just be having, oh, sex with robots. We will marry them by 2050. 
that's cr- now that's one of the crazy things. Yeah. Really, uh, I, I don't know. I like human contact. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think I would get involved with. Yeah, that would. Yeah, that would be kind of creepy. Uh, you know, there was a movie back in the early seventies. I think Sleeper with. Uh, is that Woody Allen? Yeah, with Woody Allen. <laughs> yeah, there, there was there was uh, oh, there was man. robots or whatever that they actually fooled around with, and I think they married them and so forth. I don't know if it gets to that point. That's that's uh, kind of creepy, but who knows? Who knows? Good night, Irene. Huh? <laughs> wow. Since 2020, there are robots that can detect when they are in pain, and they can self repair. That's crazy. Now that's some scary stuff because yeah. I they, they had to shut down a robot not long ago. Uh, the robot was the robot was actually um, starting to have feelings uh, not long ago, a few years ago there was a robot that had feelings I wonder how that, how, how does that work I don't know, I, I mean, mean how can they mentally think have pain receptors or I, I have, yeah, I have I no, I, no I see that's when it gets into the phase where you don't really know how they operate which gets a little scary yeah, hmm. okay well, because of concerns over data pri- privacy, the EU has created a draft of ethics guidelines for AI, ensuring AI will respect human rights. And that EU stands for? Uh, that's the that's European Union, I believe. Okay. And uh, you know what? Guidelines are always set, but, you know, these... What really uh, happens. Uh, yeah, what really goes on? Who knows? I mean, I don't know if I trust that. Okay, historic fact. One of the first AI programs was created in 1965 by Carl DeGeraci. It was named Dendrol. It automatically discovered unknown forms of medication. What? Hmm, It's pretty interesting. 1965. I was born in 64. Wow. So one year later. Banks use AI for revenue gen. Re, wait, yeah, yeah. Whoops, sorry. Uh, for revenue generation and risk management. So banks are even using AI. Oh, absolutely. They could uh, they could figure out what to do and how safe something is or whatever. They could mm. they could add up things a lot quicker than human beings. I'm sure. Uh-huh. Deep Blue was the first AI robot made in 1996. It was a chess playing computer. Now that we we did hear of. I mean. Yes. That's just. I think you played against one, didn't you? Yeah. Well, in a computer, I played, but I won. I beat you, the computer. You beat the computer. I don't know about now with them being so smart. <laughs> Experts believe AI will take over 16% of current jobs. There you go. I can already see. Well, it's self checkout. That's. Uh, hurting at well, these is. big chains, you yes, know. Yes, absolutely. But, I mean, uh, not that that's AI, but I mean, well, still, I jobs guess, are being lost. Sure, that's a form of it. Uh-huh. I mean, personally, I, I try to go to a human checkout. I, I know, I, give them Yeah, I kind of stay business. away from the, the automated ones. A startup called Outsider uses electric AI-based yard trucks to create fully operated yard operations. They are repetitive and dangerous to human beings. Now that I can see. I, I mean, I mean, you know, you know, for manual heavy type of lifting and so forth, it might be repetitive or dangerous. How about the bomb squads that go in and they and they, you know, with the robots? I think that's a that's a useful thing there. Hmm. Researchers at University of Stanford created a machine learning uh, algorithms that is capable of predicting death with a shocking 10% accuracy. Wow. Maybe they're causing the death and that's how they can <laughs> predict I think, it. I think it's actually 90%. Oh my goodness, I couldn't see your writing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's 90%. Okay, accuracy. let me redo. A shocking 90% accuracy. I know they're killing them. Wow. <laughs> In the uh, medical world, the tug robots can carry 1,000 pounds of medication to any location in the hospital. That's mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, it is. AI has shown to be better at detecting breast cancer than human doctors and just as good as reading or double reading a diagnosis confirmed by the doctors. Well, that's, that's amazing. Wow. With the aid of AI, Canadian startup Blue Dot predicted the, the coronavirus pandemic before the world knew what was going on. Oh, so really? they actually predicted it. 
And one final thing I just read today, strangely enough, Sherry, companies are now making instructional videos without hiring voiceover artists or actors. There you go. It's all done with AI. So there you go. That's what we were talking about. They do take jobs. There's... And there's um, they, they, there's programs where you can write. Right. The, the, the writers. Writers and books. so forth. Yes. So there you go. So you know what? You all decide. You things. decide, folks. But anyway. Thanks for stopping by. Yes. Tune in again. We'll see you next time. Take care. Have a good week.